Hi everybody, thanks for joining me yet again for a new Alan Oldsworth lesson video. I'm going to do Metal Fatigue today, which is probably the last major popular song of Alan's that I haven't done yet. Uh, I've been putting it off for a while because, to be uh, honest, I'm not like a huge fan of the song. Uh, but actually, I think it would be good to show because it reinforces how Alan thinks of triads. If you watch some of my other videos, the on Murray Go Rounds or... Uh, the things you see are three sheets to the wind. I talk about how Alan sometimes plays triads, and that happens in this song. This entire song is built with pretty simple chords, but a majority of them are just really major and minor chords, just in Alan's sort of special way of playing it. But the problem is, it's kind of physically tough because he moves across the neck so much. So, to understand the chords are probably going to be pretty easy but to actually play some of them is going to be pretty challenging so uh, keep that in mind when you try this or of course you can alter it any way that you see fit so anyway let's start with metal fatigue so i just want to talk about two quick things here uh if you want to try to play this song with a band what makes this particularly tough is you need two different harmonizers the distorted guitar parts for the intro and like the outro and even in the middle of the song, Alan has a harmonizer set a whole step down or two half steps. But for all the clean parts, the harmonizer is set a perfect fourth up or five half steps up. So that's going to be really tricky to sort of switch in between two of them. Uh, two of them. I actually don't know how he does it live. I know uh, when he's playing, he actually, if you look at the uh, Tokyo Dream live video, when he's playing, you can see him sort of lower the effect and raise the effect, but I don't know how he switches between the two different ones. I know a lot of, he had two volume pedals that were always on, and he would just turn, one would just go to clean and one would have distortion, so it wouldn't be like a foot switch. You just fade one in, so I don't know if he was actually playing with it, with it uh, on the rack mount or not. Uh, the other thing is just to talk about the triads themselves and how they're built. So basically the verses, pre-choruses uh, are all built from this kind of voicing. Now this is a C major because we have a C, uh, an E, and a G. And it's kind of a weird way of playing this, but as I said, if you watch my other videos, you know that this uh, isn't really uncommon for Alan. It's more prominent in his earlier material, but not so much after uh, this album actually. So I would consider this a C major. And then if you take your third finger and move it down here to E flat, we have C minor. And then if we take those two fingers and move them down a half step, then we have G major. We have G, B, oops, and D. So this, that, those whole sections are really built from those triads. It's just major and minor triads. Uh, a couple of times, though, what you could do is, you, if you're playing the note on the E string, you can also double it on the high E string. And that happens a lot in the song, too. So sometimes that top note is being played as well, and other times it isn't. So uh, I just wanted to talk about that, and those are the shapes that those parts are built from. So when I start rattling off the chords, you know what they're built from. Uh, so let's get into the intro. So the intro of the song is pretty simple for Alan. Uh, this part comes in later uh, in certain sections. It's really kind of like the real chorus of the song because that's where the, the title comes from. Uh, but there's a lot of free space there that Alan eventually uses for just free improvisation and for the second half of the song, the bass player can improvise in there as well. So it gives a little more of that free improv that Alan likes to do in a more rock sense. So it's really just an A power chord with a little riff in there. So I have the harmonizer not on right now, but it's just... And then this, uh, just like I said, this is an A power chord, and then a little bend from B, like that, and then a... One of these kind of licks, it's just B, C, B, A, G. And then sometimes you, uh, the second time, Alan plays an A harmonic. That's really all it is. And with the harmonizer now set a whole step down, this is what it sounds like. That's all it is. Nothing really crazy. 
So like I said, that harmonizer is set a whole step down every time that part is being played, and that's what's tricky. So other times, instead of switching between settings, I'll just mention that that part's being played, or I'll just play it without it. Uh, so now we're going to get into the actual verse section. So now we're at the verse section, so no more pick. And now we have the harmonizer set to a perfect fourth. Can I hear it? So, as I said, this whole part is built on major and minor triads, just the way that Alan plays them. So the first chord of the song is G major, and he's doubling the note on the high E string here. And that moves to D major. So your first finger stays in the same spot, but now you're moving all of your fingers now for D major. That's kind of tricky because it's so high up on the neck. That's the first two chords. Then it goes to D major, played like this, to A major. Then you bring down that, that first shape that we played in G, but now it's an, uh, it's an octave lower. Once again, doubling with the high E string. That goes from G major to A major, and then back to D major to A major. And that whole part repeats exactly the same way, but of course there's a little bit of variation there. Starts off with the same two chords of G major to D major. D major, but then instead of A major, you're now adding in the high E string on top, like that. That moves to A major, to E major. Now what happens here is you move your first finger down a half step and you play that one note. So now you actually have a G sharp minor triad. And then you move that down to F sharp major. So those are the two parts and that happens every time. The only difference is on certain repeats on the second and third repeat of that verse uh, later in the song, the last chord is different. But this is what it sounds like. And then, beats again. So, that's that part. And then I guess it would go to the, uh, I guess we'll call this the pre-chorus. Uh, pre so, here's the pre-chorus section. So, the pre-chorus, still clean guitar, and not using the pick. Uh, it's an A minor 7, and then that goes to a B minor 7, but now we're adding in a G on top, so I would say this is a B minor 7 sharp 5. You can also think of this as a G major add 9, but I think just to keep the structure the same, the interval structure, this is how it was played, uh, that's how I would call it. And then it goes to A minor 7 to B minor 7 sharp 5. Then it voice leads that sharp 5 to a C minor 7. Now this next chord I had so much difficulty on because I could never hear exactly what's going on in there, but I'm pretty confident on it now. And it's kind of odd because there's an easier way of playing it. I think Alan's just playing this. He's just playing E, A, D, and G, which is really just kind of like a uh, E minor 11 kind of thing. You could play this over here. So I don't know why he chose to play it here, but you could do it here as well. Like this. But uh, he actually, and you can see it in the Tokyo video, he moves his hands up higher on the neck. And there's also a difference in the uh, tone of the strings. And then it goes back to C minor 7, and then B e minor 7 sharp 5. Back to A minor 7 to B e minor 7 sharp 5. And it ends on C minor 7. And then it goes back to the main riff. Like that. Then comes the verse part. The verse part, the second verse, repeats exactly the same way. The difference is the last chord is different. Typical of that sneaky Allen. So the second verse starts off the same way. But 
of course it repeats again, but I'm fast forwarding here. Instead of going to F sharp major, he goes to F sharp minor. And the reason why he does this is because it leads into the next part better, which I guess is like a, an extension of the pre-chorus. I'm not sure exactly what to call this part, uh, but we'll go over that now. So I guess you can call this section the pre-pre-chorus, because it's before the pre-chorus. Uh, once again, it's the same major uh, and minor tries that we're using, but now there's a little bit more melody to the top uh, of the chord. So we just ended the second verse with the F-sharp minor. And that leads into this next section well, because it's now G major, and then you're adding in the high E string note, the B, and that goes to A major. Then you go to B minor, to D major, to A major. A major, and you're playing the high E string note there, to E major, you move your first finger down a half step to now you have a G sharp minor, then F sharp major, to F sharp minor. That's that whole section repeats twice. Then at this part, when it goes to F sharp minor, the rhythm changes. So it goes F sharp minor, but now you're doing this uh, melody thing on the top two strings. You're playing the F sharp minor, and then playing the high E string, and then back to the B string like that. And that's kind of the rhythm motif uh, for the, the next sort of two measures in here. And it's got uh, kind of like a three or a six feel, depending on how you want to count it. So it's F sharp minor. To G major, then it goes to A major, to B minor, but then that B minor jumps really quickly up to D major, which is really tricky. Then it goes to A major, of course with the high E string there, to another A major, E major, G sharp minor, and then here is sort of like a little weird twist. Alan then plays a B flat minor 7 sharp 5. Like that. So this is what that second, and I'll play the whole thing actually, if I don't mess it up too badly. And then that goes to the pre-chorus, which is just what we played before, but now modulated down a whole step, of course, because Alan needs to do that. So instead of starting on A minor 7, is G minor 7 to A minor 7 sharp 5. Same exact part as before. G minor 7, A minor 7 sharp 5, B flat minor 7, uh, D minor 11, Back to B flat minor seven sharp five, uh, B flat minor seven to A minor seven sharp five, G minor seven. Whoops, sorry. Uh, A minor seven sharp five, B flat uh, minor seven. So this is what the whole pre second pre chorus sounds like. If you got that whole part, you pretty much are done with the song because uh, everything repeats the same way again. Just, uh, I think one of the, the parts repeats twice as long. But that's really it. So I'll go through all those sections. Uh, and then we get to the solo part. So I'll describe to you what I think is going on for the solo harmony now. Well, of course, you know that there's no two guitar players uh, in Alan's band on IOU, it's just him, so when he plays the solo live, he's just playing the solo. And the bass is just playing the bass part. On the record, there is a second guitar track playing some chords in there, so I'm going to try to figure out and, and tell you what I think those chords are. First of all, I think he's using the pick here because I hear some open E string stuff, and it's I don't think it's being picked. 
the first chord to me sounds like a D minor, uh, uh, not really a D minor 9, but it's built off of this D minor 9 with the uh, 11 in here. It's one thing that Alan loves doing. This kind of thing. So I guess it's like a D9 sus4 to a D minor 9, or just you can think of the whole thing as like a D minor 11 kind of vibe. Of course, it's kind of got that, that I hear that high E string in there ringing out like this. Then it goes to uh, an A minor 11. I also hear kind of the, the open E here as well. Uh, then the next part, I think, is a, a B flat major with a C in the bass or a, um, a C9 sus4. And then that moves to a C major with the add 11. Uh, and then the last chord goes back to that A minor uh, 11 sound. So uh, that whole thing is, I think, diatonic to F major or G Dorian. Then that part repeats basically the same way, but there's a, a little bit of harmonic difference. So instead of going to A minor 11, it goes to B minor 11. And then back to the next two chords of C9 sus4, the C major with the add 11. And then finally, the last chord sounds something like something like this, sort of like this um, C7 sus4 without the the fifth in it, because there's uh, no G here. Something like that. I think that's the overall idea of the harmony. And over that entire section, it's really just F major or G Dorian, except for that one chord, the B minor 11, where Alan plays B Dorian over it. So it's a relatively simple solo uh, progression to follow for Alan. So uh, I guess he was dipping into some pop sensibilities and thinking, ah, let's not make this part any more uh, complicated for the listener to uh, follow than it needs to be. So uh, I think that's what's going on for the solo. But anyway, like I said, that's really it. And then for the rest of the song, it's the same parts that we just did, just uh, one part repeats twice as long. So I might as well just talk about those sections here. So if the solo again goes back to the distorted part. And now the bass is actually doing some improvisation. You know, a free improv there. Then it goes into the third verse, which is just like the first verse that we just did. Uh, but, I'm uh, sorry, the second verse that we just did with that uh, F sharp minor at the end. So it starts up the same way. a little bit faster to get through it. I'll do the full thing. So F sharp major there. And it's this one that has the F sharp minor in it. Because that leads into what I call the pre-pre-chorus. This part repeats four times. So it goes again. Third time. Last time. And then the next part then. B flat minor seven sharp uh, sharp five. Then it goes to the uh, I guess the, the pre-chorus part that I was saying, but now it's back to A. So A minor seven to B minor seven sharp five. Exactly the same. And then to finish off the song again, we go back to the intro section. That's it. Like I said, it's relatively simple uh, because I guess it's more of uh, Alan's pop stuff, but I'm not a particularly huge fan of it. I like when Alan is, could be Alan, like uh, Sphere of Innocence, and it's just all these weird modulating things. But this song is at least a good insight on how Alan thinks of triads, and maybe you can come up with some of those triads your own. And actually, what's, what I like about these kind of triads is because you could build your own kind of chords off of it. So you have, let me get clean guitar here. So like if you use any of these kind of triads, like let's say C major, well here, 
is an F, so I can do C major add 11, or if I move it up to F sharp, add sharp 11, I know he likes using that, or you can move your E down to E flat, and then you have a, a C minor, uh, C minor add sharp 11, or C minor 11, you know, and it's just, a, Alan uses these chords pretty frequently in other songs that we've seen, and you can sort of build from it, but it's really, the, the whole point of it, it's really nice to voice lead into major and minor chords from here. stuff up. Like the unmarried ground. Great voice leading without it sounding, you know, playing them in a simpler way. Uh, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, learned something, and I'll see you guys soon.